I don't really know how to start shows. Come on now, don't start, don't start liking me now. So yeah, I'm funny compared to, you know, well you'll see later. I stand for mayhem! I know a lot of fucking idiots that think a lot of shit is mean-spirited just because it goes against what they believe. But the relief of comedy is to take things that aren't funny and it allows us to laugh about them for an hour. We got a purple suit to buy and a gigantic coffin. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Why Are You Laughing? Live from the Vaulted Podcast Studios. Today, I'm pleased to introduce to you the late, great Greg Giraldo. Uh, genuinely one of my favorites uh, growing up. We lost him uh, far too soon, but uh, we'll talk about all of that today with uh, Mike Harris from Very Good Show. And uh, Matt from Rhode Island, of these, the curator of these here vaulted podcasts. <laughs> Hello, boys. Um, Hello. Hello. So Greg Giraldo, and I, I know that's I don't know if you were a fan or not, Matt. I know Mike was, but it was yeah. genuinely one of my favorites growing up. And I always say, it's funny, because uh, this will come up later, but um, Giraldo was the guy, like, my favorites – when I was a kid, or the kids, the, the guys that got me into comedy. Yeah. Like the first album I owned and the first uh, Comedy Central Presents that I would watch over and over and over again were Jim Gaffigan and Brian Regan. Mm -hmm. um, the guy who genuinely, and I never even really thought of him like this until I was doing this episode, but the guy that like um, guided me from Regan and Gaffigan to the guys I like today uh -huh. was Greg Giraldo. <laughs> um, because I loved everything. I was like, oh, this guy's fucking hilarious. And so that brought me to guys like, you know, Colin Quinn with Tough Crowd and uh, Norton and Opie and Anthony. Like, he was in so many of these things that mm -hmm. I love today and involved in them. Mm -hmm. And and he was like, you know, kind of a mainstream guy with the amount that he was on Comedy Central and everything. Yeah. Um, that he was the first guy that I f like, fell in love with comedically that led to a lot of what my comedy taste is now. So, um, and, and he's a name like... People have remembered Patrice overwhelmingly. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Patrice is a name where he's probably more popular now than Larger when he was alive. Um, Geraldo gets forgotten in all of that. And Geraldo, like you could, I mean, you could definitely argue that Geraldo had a better stand up career than Patrice as mm -hmm. far as pure stand up. Pure stand up. And, and while he was alive. According you know. to Craig, pure Craig, stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Craig <laughs> would argue that. Thank God Craig's not here for this. Uh. Oh, well, he didn't do enough. Um, How many hours he's got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he died after his first one. <laughs> Spoiler alert, folks. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Geraldo, genuinely one of my favorites. And yeah. uh, if you know Greg Geraldo, you know a very brilliant guy and started as he, he got into uh, Columbia, got his bachelor's from Columbia. Super smart. He passed the uh, LSATs. 99th in the percentile. 99th percentile. In That's the, uh, insane. In the law school exam. And uh, he got into Harvard Law. He got his JD from Harvard. Do you know what that is? The Juris Doctor. Juris, Juris Doctor. That's what I have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I'm a, oh, two I in the same. You're kind of the anti-Greg Geraldo. He couldn't get out of law fast enough. You couldn't get in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. he's a brilliant mind that uh, he graduated from Harvard Law. Yeah. 99th percentile in the LSAT is insane. Yeah, That's bonkers. the hardest test I've ever taken in my life. Very smart guy, but he was- Bonkers test. So out of, um, out of, out of college, out of Harvard, mm -hmm. he uh, got a job with one of the biggest law firms in uh, New York, I believe he was in, um, but hated it. He said he- Im immediately knew that he f that he fucking hated it, um, so he quit and pursued stand up in uh, 1992, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, but his his career in law was not over because I never heard this story. Yeah, this is an awesome story. Um, so uh, comedian friend Jeff Ross, you all know, uh, Jeff Ross was in a bit of a legal bind, and not for what I thought. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I thought, oh boy, Greg Geraldo got him off those charges, but nope, Jeff Ross still squeaking by on the uh, child rape. But um, are you not aware of that? I see you're not reacting. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some uh, sketchy stuff with Greg Geraldo that has apparently been on the hush hush for a long time. I don't, I don't know why. Hey, Greg Geraldo? I'm sorry, Jeff not Greg. I'm sorry, Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross. Oh, Oof, gee, slandering a great man. <laughs> No, Jeff Ross has had some uh, sketchy stuff, uh, but he was in a legal bind where it seems like he was in the right, actually kind of like a hero almost. Yeah. Um, so we go to a comedy club in Long Island, I believe in 1993, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Geraldo has quit the law 
And uh, as Geraldo said, basically, like, you go to law school to get the paper that says, I went to law school. Yeah. But you don't know how to be a lawyer. Like, you Dude, don't have, I say that all the time. You don't I'm, have any You don't have any fucking idea how to actually, no. like, uh, you know, nope. uh, uh, litigate. <laughs> they don't teach you how to be a lawyer. Yeah. They which don't, is, like, the day-to-day -day operational Which is a microcosm. That's, that's school in general. Yeah. Like, you know, I was a communications, but I didn't, well, <laughs> they didn't teach me anything uh, about podcasting. But, like, <laughs> college is more like a general, like, school thing. Yeah. But, like... That was a devoted to law. A yeah. professional school that is supposed to teach you how to do a job. They don't teach you how to do that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So uh, a comedy club in <clears throat> Long Island in 1993, uh, there was a heckler in the audience. Mm -hmm. And apparently Jeff Ross had some words with this guy. Uh, the guy pulls out a gun. Uh, it turned out to be a toy gun, but it looked real. And so Jeff Ross, in a heroic move, wrestled this guy trying to get the gun away from him. It caused a real melee. And uh, Gre uh, Jeff Ross was being charged with, uh, what was it, disturbing the peace? Inciting or a riot. Something like, inciting a riot. Yeah. Um, so things must have gotten pretty crazy. And then, uh, well, I'll let him. He was on, Greg Geraldo was on uh, Opie and Anthony talking about this incident. So I'll let him explain. Now, when did you realize you didn't want to be a lawyer? Uh, the minute I took the fucking law school test, that, you know, in 1990, I graduated in 1990, and I knew right away that this wasn't going to happen, but then I was, like, locked in. What was I going to do? Right. That's a lot of time to put in. And that then... was a lot of time. And then, you know, I ended up quitting. The, the most, I, I quit, and I started doing stand-up, and I was living in this shitty welfare hotel on 32nd Street that my friend was renovating, and I was living there for, like, eight months. And then I got a deal to do a sitcom based on me being a lawyer. So like I took that deal money and paid back all this. It was like this whole full circle bullshit, you know. Where like the, the only reason to go to law school in the first place is to get the paper so you can become a lawyer. You don't right, learn right. how to be a lawyer. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that was uh, that was him just kind of setting up the misery he felt like being a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, but then he tells a little more about the Jeff Ross story. Yeah, and you know, you know, the only legal case I, I took all that Harvard learning, and you know what I used was <laughs> was fucking Jeff Ross. The comedian got yeah. busted because he was doing some college gig way out in Long Island, and it was with Red Johnny and the Round Guy, and some kid in the audience was waving this like pl plastic fake gun around, and I and I guess it was a very realistic looking fake gun. So Jeff Ross like grabbed it from him, and they started fucking around with the gun, and they, they end up getting tackled by security and taken in, and you know it was supposed to be a clear cut and dry menace, like, whatever it was just going to be just going. I'd never done anything in a courtroom ever, but I knew a guy who was a DA in Long Island. I told Jeff, I go, I'll go out with you. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> we go out there. They have a picture of the gun, and the thing looks like a gun, so they put it into like the fucking weapons charge category. And so I'm like, I, they it's getting a little the, too I, heavy. Yeah, for... They call me to the front. I'm like, I, don't, I, I have no idea. I thought we were just going to say <laughs> guilty. And they go, Well, you can't plead guilty, sir. That's a two year charge. Oh, <laughs> oh, like, oh, like, you're going to put him in jail, like right there. <laughs> Jeff Ross is saying we, I, if, knowing Jeff like I know now, I would have fucking put him away for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's also funny if you go uh, find Jeff Ross talking about it as well, because his version is, and maybe this became the version when Greg died, where he kind of like you know jazzed it up a little. He's like, ah, Greg sweet talked the the DA, and we got out of it too sweet. Greg's like, ah, no, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> We had to get a real lawyer after that. <laughs> so so uh, that's great. But uh, despite not really knowing the law, it does show how brilliant the mind Greg was, even though, like, I mean, that's, it certainly comes through in his comedy and a lot of the points that he makes and oh, yeah. uh, things like that. But, he, I mean, like, I guess because of his image is kind of like a guy who was miserable in his marriage and he was a uh, you know he over he ended just up overdosing miserable. a miserable guy <laughs> yeah. you don't think of him as the uh you know a colin jost type yeah. but basically that's what he was when he was coming up um and we'll hear from jim gaffigan a little later but it was very funny him and jim gaffigan were good friends uh coming up at the same time and gaffigan said that gaffigan wanted to be david tell and geraldo wanted to be brian regan and at some point, <laughs> at some point, those just completely crossed paths. Just and it was so flipped. funny to hear that for a couple of reasons. A, because as I was listening to Geraldo, I try and think like for the show, I try and think like, oh, who was he influenced by? And I think of these guys as coming up at the same time, which they pretty much did. But he has a lot of David Attell influence for sure. Oh, yeah. And Colin yeah. Quinn. 
two guys that he was like you know, not much younger than, but like they certainly had an, an impact on uh, him finding his voice. Well, I, and some of his cadence is almost a tell, like sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, too. he's got yeah. a little bit of that to tell. Yeah. So that's the funny thing is like you hear a lot of comedians rip people like, um, oh, uh, you know, there's a lot of children of the main names you hear: Hedberg, Hedberg, Todd Barry, Burr. Mm-hmm. And a tell is probably the biggest one. Oh yeah, uh, you hear those all, and you know, there's a million others. But you hear those like, oh, the children of David Tell, because it's people. You know, Big J Okerson's one, yeah. Sam Morrill's one, who you wouldn't necessarily, like, if you listen to Sam Morrill, you don't necessarily think of David Tell, but uh. you see that there's definitely influence in his cadence and the Absolutely. way he talks and everything. Um, now that can work in a couple different ways. It can work where you're essentially just ripping off David Tell. Or it can work like the way it did with Greg Giraldo, where that's kind of a basis for finding your voice, but it turns into something totally different. And, you know, David Tell isn't making the same political points or even shit about marriage or whatever right. that Greg Giraldo's. So that is like certainly his influence, but he spun it off into a totally different type of it's, career. Yeah, it's a, it's like it's different flavors of nihilism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was also hilarious to hear Gaffigan talk about being – this uh, wanted to know, be a dirty comic. Gaffigan and cursed and wanted to be a dirty comic and looked yeah. up to David Tell. And it's something, and it might even be as simple as Wild. when you listen to their voices, Jim Gaffigan sounds, just the sound of his voice, is a kind of a nerdy, family yeah. friendly guy, whereas Geraldo has this gruff way of talking. And just gargles the, rocks. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the family clean act just suits a guy stereotypically like yeah. Gaffigan more than it does Craig Geraldo. Um, but we heard. In that, uh, in the clip we played earlier, we heard him talk about his uh, the sitcom that he got offered. Yeah, um, and this is like we talked about with uh, Tim Allen. This was a theme in the '90s where if you had an act or an interesting story yeah. or whatever, then people would say, "Oh, let's give you a sitcom based around that." I mean, a Harvard-trained lawyer turned comedian. That actually does sound like, like a TV show. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they said, "Let's give you a show about being a lawyer, or whatever." Yeah. And uh, it was kind of a Essentially, I think it was Geraldo that I heard talk about this, where uh, he was friends with Ray Romano when they were mm. young, and Geraldo got a sitcom deal, and Romano just got fired from news radio and replaced with Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan? I and, forgot about that. And That's right. Ray Romano was down on his luck and miserable, and the industry wasn't giving him anything, and Greg Geraldo was on a skyrocket, you know, three years <laughs> into comedy, he's getting TV shows, he's at the Montreal Comedy Festival and everything, and then Ray Romano got everybody who loves Raymond. And Geraldo was kind of branded this guy who things were canceled and this dirty comedian and all that. So they flipped roles as well. Um, So it's interesting to see all these guys change kind of what they were or what they were set out as in Geraldo's career, like in his path. Yeah, in his universe there. Yeah. Um, So speaking of his TV show, um, this is both him and Burr, I believe, talking about that sitcom. I started in 92, and then in 95, I did the Montreal Comedy Festival. There was an agent from L.A. that kind of discovered me or whatever. It was, it was kind of days when you could still do that. You know, if somebody saw you and then, and uh, you were castable and had a story, you know, then, then you could just go to Los Angeles and, you know, Turn tell your, your stupid story and some executive it. would give you money and develop a shitty show that would get canceled in three episodes. Pause for one second. Oh, my God. Rewind a little bit because that's a clip from the actual show. But it's funny you said that, Mike. Oh. So this is from uh, the documentary they did on Comedy Central. Yeah. And it's called uh, Give It Up for Greg Giraldo. And I think it was just like a one-hour special that they did, kind mm-hmm. of in dedication. He was so, so tied into Comedy Central. Yeah. And they did, you know, an homage to him. There is a music bed in every... It's there's so not, loud. There's not a clip without a music bed. It's so loud, it's too. Not, and I, try, I, was, I almost didn't want to include this because I was like, let me find a clip <laughs> from this that doesn't have the music in the background. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Except in the, like, sad moments where it's like, we didn't see it coming. <laughs> but like in those moments, they stopped the music finally. But it's very obnoxious, so I apologize. But uh, now let's hear uh, the clip from the show, and then I think Burr talks about it a little bit. Canceled in three episodes. It's 8.30. Oh, my God. So, Barry. Oh, my God. What happened? Man, I don't know. We had a couple of bottles of champagne, a few hours of sexual gymnastics. If I had to put a name on it, I'd say we got caught up in Pope fever. I was awful in it. I couldn't act. I couldn't. I, I stood there like, what? What's? What am I doing here? And I, you know, I'd only done comedy for about two and a half years when the show got on the air. So I was it was ridiculous. I was everything that was wrong with the nature of entertainment at the time. <laughs> I think his lasted like three weeks, and mine lasted like six. And then you know, then the next time I saw him, you know, we were working like a Chinese restaurant, going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this feels about right. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, it is like he was kind of on a, a very quick rocket to the moon that stalled out quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you hear even in that, it's not maybe it's a hundred percent because we know Greg Giraldo now that you hear that and you're like that sounds weird, but that's no different than any other. Yeah. That's no different than everybody loves Raymond, you know. Um, yeah. Just the kind of you know typical sitcom type of style, and uh, I'm so glad he didn't get that. Because I don't know that we ever would have had Greg Giraldo, you know, when we talk about like revisionist history with people's careers yeah. and shit. Uh, he gets a sitcom that's on for five years. We're not getting him on Tough Crowd or that's The true. Roasts. He or, might still be alive. He's not the same comedian. Maybe for his life yeah. it could have been a little better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe things would have turned out a little differently. He but not be, for this show. Maybe that's he, right. wouldn't, he wouldn't be as depressed, but we wouldn't have had the same joy yeah. <laughs> when we watch him. Um Although with Geraldo, you do you wonder maybe that would have uh, made it worse. worsened his because the same way he felt like he didn't fit in in law. I think a guy like that, especially with his mind, his brilliant mind, I don't think he would have been happy mm. playing the wacky sitcom dad or whatever the, the, that role was. You know, um, so very glad of, uh, for our sake that he didn't get that sitcom because I believe we're at the point where that led to Tough Crowd. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn, which we've talked about on this show before, uh, very influential in so much of what you see in comedy, and one of the best elements of that was uh, Greg Giraldo. Actually, Zach Amico has a great roast joke of Bobby Kelly, where he says, um, uh, you know, Bobby Kelly is overweight, and a lot of people are worried about him dying, but he's got nothing to worry about, because his friends are dying in order of how funny they were on Tough Crowd. <laughs> 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 so shout out Zach Amico. But that is, that I, would, I would say that's true, other than maybe DiPaolo. When you think of Tough Crowd, the yeah. first guy you think of is probably Patrice. Patrice. And then I think Geraldo would be second on that list. Yeah. Well, especially Colin the, Quinn's in there somewhere. Well, of course, Colin <laughs> Quinn, but I just kidding. mean the, the panelists. No. And uh, he had one of the great, you know, we we talked about it on the Tough Crowd episode, but I figured yeah. it's worth playing again, and I found a, a slightly better version uh, from that same documentary, Give It Up for Greg Geraldo. One of the best dust-ups This is the, ever. Uh, the Dennis Leary. One of the, one yeah. of the great dust-ups. Yeah, him and Dennis Leary uh, I mean, get into it on Tough Crowd. And by the way, just the points that Geraldo makes alone – it, this clip shows not just that Geraldo is a better comedian and quicker and sharper uh, just as a, as a funny guy, but also just intellectually so Smart. much running circles around Dennis yeah. Leary. And I just hate Dennis Leary's excuse. Yeah. It's well, so yeah. shitty. Let's hear it. Or maybe there's a nonviolent way to solve the whole North Korea thing. Good thinking. No, they're asking for a, well, there might be. They're asking for, uh, for what? There's a nonviolent way to, to solve the problem with the country that we hate that hates us. It's got weapons pointed at us. I don't think so. No, you're right. Like Russia, for example, that big Russian war. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are things. Hold that, on a second. There, there Hold on a second. That, that is so quick, so stingingly quick. <laughs> yeah, that was really. Fast. And that's what the that's what tough crowd was probably best at. And I've yeah. never seen it. Me- it's a me- and Opie and Anthony when the yeah, guys that, were busting each other's balls. That's what was best about that show is the quickness that guys like Geraldo, Norton yeah. would, for their minds to work that fast, you watch that and almost think like he knows he's going to bring up, <laughs> you think <laughs> like you think that was scripted because how quickly would he have Russia in his back pocket? Like right. that is so sharp. Yeah. And it's like, that's not a written joke. That's just no. something he knows. Exactly. And he's able to just like say it. Dude, that, yeah, right. That is one of the skills that like you just, you can't learn that. No. Like Anthony is almost just as good as that shit. Yeah. Like and then, when, well, that's what they always say about Anthony, yeah. is that he had a comedian's mind. Yeah. And that's where there are some, and I think, uh, not to always bash SNL, but that's my, kind of my go-to when I think of it, where mm-hmm. there are some people that can kind of like learn how to be funny, particularly in sketches or whatever, yeah. where that can be a learned skill. That's why there are improv classes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you can learn that. Yeah. But just having whatever that muscle is, that guys like Jim Norton and Greg yep. Giraldo and Patrice had, um, that is, it's... You can't learn it. It's impossible. No. Um, the rest of the clip? Yeah, please. Guys like Greg, if you showed up not prepared, you get your head handed to you. This guy writes so many jokes before the show, it's not even funny. It's unbelievable. He's, he's got, he's got a pocket full of them. That's right. kind of what we do here, Dennis. Yeah. Comedy writer. <laughs> <laughs> Was there more to that? That's where the clip ends, there's, right? Uh, yeah. I think, I believe, though, there's another clip. From that same... Uh, I'm trying to see. Because the, the the line he throws out after that is, uh, 
Oh yeah, no, that that that's it from that one. Yeah. Yeah. So Dennis Leary talks about how he's like, oh, you're the kid that uh, told the teacher would ask the teacher for more homework. More homework. And yeah. he said, yeah, well, maybe if you did a little more comedy writing, your show would still be on the air. <laughs> in that, and then he got mad. <laughs> in the in the uh, let's give it up, give it up for Greg yeah. Giraldo. Yeah. Dennis Leary after that also has like a talking head as part of the tribute. Yeah. And basically like defends uh. his point again on how he's like, well, I didn't understand. I, was like, I thought you just showed up and like bullshitted. Like right. I thought it was, just, but that was what he was doing. Like. That's what it was. There's an interesting. So he's just better at it than you. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I've talked to someone who may be able to get uh, Lenny Clark on this program, which I'd like to talk to him about Boston comedy and stuff like that. That'd be awesome. But That'd I think cool. that that might have been more the mentality in you know the coke fueled '80s, where mm -hmm. it's like guys just come up and bust balls. Yeah. Whereas like Greg Giraldo is. 100% capable of that, yep. but when you add effort to that, it completely changes them. You know what I mean? Not to say the yep. old school guys didn't give effort. I know a lot of them did. But Leary, I, I don't know if he's one of those guys. Nope. No, but also Bullshit, Geraldo, do coke, steal yeah. Bill Hicks' jokes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah, Bill Hicks had been dead for a while at that point. He didn't have any more jokes. <laughs> he didn't know what to say about yeah. any new material <laughs> about North what? Korea. When Hicks didn't have any North that. Korea stuff. <laughs> um, no, but it, it's also just, Geraldo just had such a giant monster IQ. Like, yeah. He's just such a smart guy. Anyways, I mean, getting it, getting your, your bachelor's from Columbia, he obviously knew his history. And Completely, yeah. Was intelligent. Um, yeah, and he came from, you know, he. Grew, that's the thing about Geraldo that I think it made him such a perfect fit for that role on Tough Crowd. Yeah. And we'll talk about the roles he should have gotten later. Mm -hmm. um, but that make him so perfect for that format is he's a perfect mix of he grew up in the Bronx – with two immigrant parents, yep, and also went to Columbia and Harvard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's the perfect mix <laughs> of a guy that can give both perspectives. Yeah. Um, was there any more from a yeah, tough so crowd? This is the clip you gave me later. So this is like right after tough crowd. Oh, of course, yeah. So that yeah. actually brings me nicely to what I was uh, talking about. So tough crowd ends, and uh, in my opinion. This has always been my opinion that Tough Crowd got canceled, not because of ratings, but because of language they used and opinions they had yeah. and um, the nature of the show where people called it, it sexist. Was, it was or, too honest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I believe this clip backs that up where Comedy Central didn't necessarily want Tough Crowd to end, um, but they did want maybe a shakeup. Mm-hmm. So he really popped on Tough Crowd. I only Incredible. did Tough Crowd twice, but like he really popped. And he, by the way, that's that was like one of those things where, you know, like that combined with the roast because the format of Tough Crowd was very much a, a roasting environment. Yes, too. it was guys being guys kind of thing, ball busty. Yeah, and so there was they canceled. Um, a tough crowd. Then Comedy Central begged Greg to redo Tough Crowd. Ugh. Wow! Without Colin, mm, disgusting. He asked Colin. Colin goes fine. Pause for a second. He got shit for it. So a couple. This was on uh, the We Might Be Drunk podcast yeah. with Sam Morill and Mark Normand. That's obviously uh, Jim Gaffigan's voice you're hearing. And this. Luckily, this podcast just happened to come out the week we're recording this. This just uh -huh. came out the other day. Just came out. And I happened to listen to it and hear this story and figure we should include this. Yeah. Because I'd never heard this story <clears throat> before. But also, I what I love about Colin Quinn is I had the same reaction as Sam Marill, where I heard that and I was like, that's fucking just these pricks. And Colin's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that's the greatness of uh, CQ right there. Yeah. Um, but now let's keep hearing uh, how it played out. Shout out to uh, the We Might Be Drunk podcast. On the wall, they have Rappin' Rodney's album. Yeah, I oh, saw do they that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I know they love, they love them. Rodney, yeah. <laughs> well, they are. It, they, so they love Geraldo, and you hear them talk about yeah. that, and they love Atel. Like, that's a show that really, um, those two guys respect older comedy a lot. Like, yeah. The, yeah. That was, the comedy well, you, that was hip when they were growing you up. You can tell that from their act, too, though. Oh, completely. Like, that's I think I think the guys I like now, yeah. you can tell that. That would have been Tough Crowd now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Say uh, say Tough Crowd lasted for 20 years. Mm -hmm. The rotation now 
would be these Sam guys. Marill, yep. Joe List, Louis J. Gomez, Shane Gillis, these t- Tim Dillon. Like Mark that would Norman. be that would be Norman. Yeah, that would be the, uh, the tough crowd. Tim crew, Dillon would rule on. Oh tough my god, crowd. he would be so I've, good. I've said before, maybe I said this in the tough crowd episode, but. The only guy I think that would be capable, if you said we're bringing back tough crowd with a new generation, Tim Dillon, it would be Tim Dillon oh. and that same group of rotating guys that I just mentioned. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- these two guys especially are like comedians, comedians. Like, Completely. You can tell like they are. Like, and they put out their own stuff. Of comedy. Like Netflix doesn't want yeah. that. I mean, no, Norman just got a half hour on Netflix, yeah. but like they had to put their shit out on YouTube. Yeah. Because you know they're straight white guys who aren't appealing to uh, Netflix or Amazon or any of the streaming services. So yeah, they they do respect comedy a lot. Yeah, so I suggest experts. that episode of We Might Be Drunk. But anyways, Dark let's fish. please uh, continue, Jim Gaffigan. They so there was that that didn't work. There was also a talk show when he they were going to do another show. He was going to be the host of it, and they tested. And I'm like, this is it. The, Greg's on his way. And Greg was associated with the LA group, but the power base in New York was the Daily Show. And I think Chappelle. And oh, so wow. so the power base in L.A. had less influence, I think. And so they gave that time slot, which is, by the way, Comedy Central has so many time slots. They gave it to Stephen Colbert. Ooh. So- and that man huh. was Stephen Colbert. Now. Uh, was Stephen if you're, Colbert. <laughs> well, that's what I was about to say. Right. Now. <laughs> With the image of Stephen Colbert dancing with needles in our heads, we think, "Oh my! How how dare they?" The Colbert Report was a great it was show. hysterical. It was a very funny show, but it's it was funny to hear this podcast because before, if I never heard this podcast, I was going to bring up the subject of how perfect would um, Greg Giraldo been if he had lived for John Stewart's retirement, like mm-hmm. if he was still alive. How perfect would he have been oh as the God. replacement on The Daily Show? And then Sam Marilla actually put it perfectly, where he said he's the perfect fit for that role because he's an unpretentious liberal, which is very yeah. rare to find in comedy now. So now with The Daily Show and shows like it, John Oliver and all these, mm-hmm. have become is like a smug looking down your nose, where Greg Gir- and Stewart had a lot of this, but I think Greg Geraldo was better at it, getting his point across while making you think, I see his side, even mm-hmm. if you disagree with him, yeah. rather than, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think Republicans would have watched Geraldo say something that they completely oppose yeah. and still be able to laugh and even understand it a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I remember because that uh, – after the uh, George W. Bush, like after his first election, that's when I first started getting like into politics and stuff. Right. And I remember watching him and being like, I don't agree with this, but I really like Jon Stewart a lot. Right, right. <laughs> And that, I mean, Stewart had a little bit of smugness where, like, it was like they would, he would just Comes play a Republican. Territory. He'd play, you know, George Bush talking. Yeah. And then the punchline would be he'd just look at the camera like, yeah, <laughs> like a dog, <laughs> a dog tilting his head. But that's at least funny. Yeah. Whereas, like, Trevor Noah and these guys are now making statements. Yes. You know, you know please clap. <laughs> clap well, along not, with it's us. It's not funny anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, so, Geraldo would have been perfect for that. And that's again why you say if guys like Geraldo and Patrice were alive, maybe it would have saved comedy in a lot of ways. Yeah. And maybe that's just us hoping that that would be the case. But I think having voices like that would have made things different. Where, let's not forget, uh, Geraldo's a man of Hispanic descent, so it would have fit the criteria. <laughs> you could put Geraldo in there and not face any backlash, really. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas he actually would have been the perfect choice rather yeah, than, let's just find a, a black guy or something. Uh, somebody you know? nobody has ever fucking heard of before. Yeah. Where the fuck did Trevor Noah come from? That, we'll have to do an episode about Holy that someday, shit. But I have no idea. <laughs> just pulled this guy out of obscurity. We're like, here you go. So uh, <laughs> it is weird, and it's hard to fault Comedy Central for a couple of reasons. A, the Colbert Report was a good show, and it's, it's not like they didn't give Geraldo any sort of platform mm-hmm. because he was brilliant on those roasts. I mean, Jeff Ross is so associated with those roasts um, and has become you know the roast master and all that. That's like his <laughs> identity. But Geraldo was the he was on every roast, and he fucking destroyed, annihilated. So. Uh, I unless there's something before that that we should get to, Matt. I think the next uh, few Flavor. clips are examples uh, of some of his some of my favorite Greg Giraldo roast jokes. This is from the Flavor Flav one. Correct. Yeah, okay. I have a couple from the Flavor Flav, and then we'll get to Jeff Foxworthy. Okay. Ice T is here. Holy Ice T, you fucking fossil. <laughs> 
Holy shit, you're so old. The first thing you bought with your record deal money was your freedom. <laughs> So smart and able to tie, and that's where I say the Colin Quinn influence comes in, like yeah. just tying in the idea of history and politics with fucking slams on a roast, you know. Um, but let's uh, and, yeah. and here's before we uh, keep going, Greg Giraldo in a way uh, ruined jokes for the same way we say, you know, uh, this person saw this and tried to do it but couldn't, uh -huh. you know, like the way I said, like, you try to make political points like Chappelle or Carlin. But you're not able to, and yeah. make and make it funny. When people saw Geraldo do the roast, they said, "Oh, let's make you know some serious personal slams." And now, if you watch Roast Battle or the Roast Masters on YouTube or uh, whatever, it is two people that don't even necessarily know each other. Just say, uh, "So Jeff's mom is dead," <laughs> <laughs> and then a punchline about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like here's a <laughs> here's a tragedy that happened. And now let's try – whereas Greg would craft these uh, brilliant jokes that are, you know, yeah. pers personal attacks of people, but actually genuinely funny and, you know, jokes rather than assaults verbally. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, now that I've said – now that I've gotten that off my chest, let's hear more from the uh, brilliance of Greg Gerald. Here's, here's one that might not be exactly what you just said. No. Oh. Still very funny. <laughs> All right. Virginia Nielsen's here. Good to see you sitting up, sweetheart. I uh, – <laughs> I guess you're in rehab, and I, I, really, I really hope that works out for you. But, uh, but seriously, if you want to stop repeating the disgusting things you've done in the past, why don't you just get your pussy sewn shut? <laughs> Think of how many spools of thread that would take. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, no, it doesn't. Uh, it's not an example. Where I, but where I talk about the brilliance of Greg, just the idea of saying spools yeah, of right, thread. Yes, that would you're right, you're right. That little add-on just shows what separates him from just... You know, you're you cunts wide. <laughs> you're yeah, a loose, right, you're right. a loose bitch. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> it's just that next level, like just yeah. language. And for all my Seinfeld bashing, I think that's what Seinfeld's very good at is yes. using some of that language mm -hmm. to make things funnier. Yes. Um, so now we go to the Jeff Foxworthy roast. <laughs> yeah, these are some of my favorite. He jokes. has a couple. He has one. Um, there's no one I hate in comedy, I don't think, more than Bill Engvall. Oh. We'll get to that one. Talk about two different fucking I remember when that when they were in. huge, the blue collar comedy blue -collar tour. Comedy and tour. I was like I always used to be like, oh, Jeff Foxworthy and uh oh. and I was like, Who's the who's the other guy? And there's like he's the Bill other Bill Engvall. Yeah. I you the, know what I like cousin. <laughs> I like Ron White. I think Ron White's in a different category from Ron those White guys. Is very funny. I think uh Larry the Cable Guy just made a decision somewhere where I'm going to be a character. I have no issue with yeah. him, really. Mm. And Jeff Foxworthy has kind of been like boiled down to a hack. But like for what he was, he I, th I think he was very good for a market that wasn't being appealed to in stand-up necessarily. So can I? Can I don't have a yeah. problem with Jeff Foxworthy, who I hate is Bill Engvall, yeah. who is none of the things I mentioned. He's, he's, he's not the, a character. He's not a real comedian. He's not, he's not a guy who marketed himself. He's just a shitbag that got dragged around by Jeff Foxworthy. He's, he was their cousin they brought with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, four felt like a better number than three can, for some reason. Can I admit something embarrassing to Go you ahead. guys? Um, the first comedy album I ever bought was Jeff Foxworthy Games Rednecks Play. Oh, no way. Yeah. I swear to God, that was the first I, one you know I ever I, bought. I, I, my <laughs> initial reaction was, was cringe, 19, but I actually had no problem with that. 1996. Well, okay, but Greg Giraldo actually boils down yeah. Jeff Foxworthy, Jeff Foxworthy's act, I think, pretty well. So instead of us talking about it, let's have right. Greg describe it. Good to see uh, Bill Engvall here. Bill, oh, no, hold on, hold on. He's a prolific. Do you want to play the Jeff Foxworthy one first? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, funny, so Jeff Fox, where I pull this clip, I was at a Goodwill and I kind of collect old comedy tapes, like yeah. sets. Yeah. And I saw a, a Jeff Foxworthy one, and I I, ha I didn't have any of his. And I was like, oh, this would be, you know, for, add to the collection. I got it, and I brought it home, and I went to go play it, and it was a Jerky Boys tape. And stuff. Oh. I was like, fucking score. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. A Jerky Boys would be going to well, remind me of that someday. We'll have yeah, to do I'll a have Jerky to Boys. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jeff Foxworthy, folks. Uh, you know, Jeff has always been an original and an innovator. You know, back when everybody was doing corny, observational comedy, Jeff came up with the idea of doing it in a southern accent. <laughs> Very original. It's a good twist. 
<laughs> it's a good twist, which pretty much boils down everything we said. Uh, we'll do a Jeff Foxworthy episode one, or a blue collar episode, maybe, oh. where we talk more about that. But now he destroys a guy I, I really hate. And, <laughs> you know, maybe they were friends. I have no idea. But this is so perfect, his joke about Bill Engvall. Good to see uh, Bill Engvall here. Bill. He's a prolific bastard, man. He's got seven comedy CDs out. Without Bill, Sears would have no comedy section. <laughs> seven CDs. Bill, did you ever think of just saying something unfunny without recording it? <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Just a genius. <laughs> and then, uh, so those were his Comedy Central roasts, but he actually did uh, a ton of a ton of roasts. He, there was the Cheech and Chong one was on TBS. Yeah, he did uh, you know shit off like um, that wasn't even uh, recorded. Like I don't know if he was on Patrice roast Patrice's roast, but roasts like that. Yeah. and he did a ton of the Howard Stern roasts, yeah. which uh, I believe this is from the uh, roast of Baba Booey, Gary Delavato. Oh. <laughs> I saw I saw uh, Robin and Lisa in the green room before having a who's got the biggest sloppiest pussy contest, <laughs> and uh, they both lost to the rolls in Artie's neck. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, fucking Christ! Look at yourself. Saying you let yourself go is like saying Gary is not classically handsome. <laughs> you look worse than your chair smells. <laughs> and how the fuck did you uh, get addicted to heroin? Seriously, you, you can't possibly have the lung capacity to snort. And uh, you sure as fuck couldn't find a vein in that walrus carcass of yours. You <laughs> walrus carcass walrus is, goes exactly carcass. to your point. Yeah. Which that And that, by the way, him shitting on Artie for his drug addiction leads to an amazing Artie Lang story. Wait, is there anything in the? I'll finish off the roast stuff first. Uh, we have he roasts Baba Booey in the next clip, and okay. then uh, so let's hear that before we. Oh, by the way, his roast of Baba Booey. For those of you that aren't aware of the Howard Stern show, it should just be noted. Um, there was a big storyline in the Howard Stern show. Gary's father died, and it was very sad. Uh, Howard neglected to go to the funeral, but it was a very <laughs> sad thing, and. Uh, and I think that gets brought up here, if I'm not mistaken. It does. <laughs> yeah, you need that backstory for sure. <laughs> Guest of honor, Baba Booey. Gary, uh, Booey. yeah, Gary. <laughs> Gary, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. And uh, the only way Howard would have missed it is if your dead father was lying here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And that's ballsy. I mean, I get people probably busted Stern's balls like that, but for a guest to come in and shit on Stern that way is pretty ballsy because uh, Howard, you may not know this, doesn't take a joke very well. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> Geraldo was just the greatest roaster ever. Uh, <laughs> I wonder, I don't know how early Jeff Ross started producing all of those. Maybe he was always, maybe that was his brainchild, the Comedy uh -huh. Central roast. But like, Geraldo was the darling of those for a long time and on yeah. every single one. So I do wonder if also, like, you know, he had multiple lanes he could have gone down where uh, he would have been perfect for a talk show that is so prevalent now and actually been funny. Um, and he would have been an amazing, you know, roaster, which became Jeff Ross's entire career where he had, you know, yeah. shows based around it. Jeff Ross, yeah. Offends America, whatever the hell it was. Um, mm. Things things like that. So uh, Bumping mics. Yeah. So... <laughs> you know, Geraldo, the sad thing about Geraldo is he had been doing comedy for 18 years when he passed, which is a long time. But we mentioned Fucking guys like we mentioned guys like Marill and Joe List and guys like that who haven't even quite popped yet. Like comedy fans know yeah. them. But like I think they're gonna be much bigger in years to come. Oh yeah. They've been doing stand up like eighteen years. You know what I mean? So Geraldo was really like coming into his own still as a stand-up, and he had only released one album before his death. He had other com like Comedy Central half hours and stuff like that. But like, it is amazing mm -hmm. to think he was so young that he haven't even he hadn't totally found his voice yet. Oh, he's like you know, forty-two. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's kind of just coming into like the prime Brutal. of his career for a comedian. Uh, but yeah, yeah, obviously that kind of leads to uh, the downfall of Greg Geraldo, which was of course drugs. And uh, he was a miser. He would talk a lot about his marriage and how he was miserable in his marriage. Mm -hmm. um, he, he and his wife had separated, never got divorced, I don't believe, but were separated at times. And that was his second marriage. Did he have any kids? At least two. I want to say two. three, maybe, possibly three. Um, 
and you know he dealt a lot with uh, prescription drugs and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I mentioned uh, it's funny that he's slamming Artie about a drug addiction because <laughs> it didn't that didn't really get brought up as much with Greg for some yeah. reason. So uh, Artie Lang was on the Joe Rogan Experience a few years ago and had a great story about just that. That's because Geraldo looked like a drug addict. It's a little... <laughs> um, so Artie doesn't. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Oh, Artie no? he he fucking a nose. drug addict. Yeah. Take a look at that nose right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, I, I think the story I don't want to. I think it's a little long, but it's worth it, so stay with it. 2006, William Shatner roast, Comedy Central, right? Geraldo was just hitting with the roast. He was getting <sighs> to be a big deal, but I had partied with him a couple of times, and you know we both had the same problem. So... Uh, so we were the only two guys coming from New York City to do the Shatner roast. This was 06 for Comedy Central. So I'm at the JFK first lounge, first first class lounge waiting for my plane. And I know Greg is supposed to be on the plane. He shows up five minutes before the plane takes off. And he goes, Hardy, man. He like hugs me, sweating. He goes, I'm tweaking. Like he was on taking amphetamines. So mm-hmm. I go, he goes, I'm not getting on a plane. I go, dude, you're, ho- you're like the best guy at these roasts now. You have to get on a plane. This is your career. And he goes, I can't get on a plane. I go, you have to get on a fucking plane. So I had all this Vicodin I smuggled <laughs> under my under my sock. I said, take a couple of Vicodin and have a beer. So I got him a beer and he started to calm down a little bit. I literally held his hand, okay? I held his hand and got him on a plane. I changed my seat to sit next to him. He was too paranoid to go to the fucking bathroom. So I would guard the bathroom mm. so no one could come in. And I, I we get to LA. Now we got to go to a dress rehearsal at CBS Radford. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett was on that roast. So now he's still f- freaking out, paranoid. And he he, want, he goes, I'm going to hug Farrah Fawcett. I go, you can't go near Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> <laughs> I go, not only is your career going to be over. You go, he goes, I'm going to hug Farrah I have to kiss her. I go, oh, she was two Jesus. feet from us. I go, you can't kiss Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> <laughs> I go, Greg, you can't kiss Farrah Like, I go, you're going to get arrested. <sighs> I go, now your career is going to be over and you're going to be arrested for sexually assaulting Farrah Fawcett on amphetamines. So I go, you just got to calm the fuck down. We get to the dress rehearsal and he goes, please don't tell anybody. And now I've been there. So I know what he's, so I go, I want. So we go back to the hotel. I, I leave my room. I sit by him like Florence fucking Nightingale. I'm giving him like hot compresses and shit. <laughs> the morning, the next morning, the uh, uh, car's coming to get us to take us to the show at noon. And he comes out of it. He comes out of the bathroom. He goes, I, I think I'm, I came down. He hugs me. He's crying. He goes, thank you so much. I go, dude, you would have done the same thing for me. Okay, so now we go to the roast. He's the first roaster up. First thing he says. He goes, Artie Lang's here. How about a hand for Artie Lang? And everybody applauds. He looks at me, he goes, look at you, Artie, you fat fucking drug addict. (laughs) (laughs) Unbelievable. And but just a side note that Artie Lang is, whatever he has become today, he's one of the best storytellers of all time. Oh, hell yeah. Like he's amazing. And that's why he was so great on Stern Show. Like his ability to take you through that story (laughs) is unbelievable. And it's a rare moment where like Artie is... The coherent one. I know, right? <laughs> you know, How fucked up you know, are you that Artie's <laughs> taking care of you? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he's pulling Vicodin out of his sock, and he's the sober one. <laughs> and he's the he's the okay one. I mean, we keep checking off people that uh, Artie Lang has outlived. I know. It's, it's astonishing. Well, where's the lie in that, though? I mean, he is a fat fucking drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what's so brilliant about it. And... He's also, to Artie's credit, the guy that finds that funny. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what's so great about it. But it is fascinating to... Um, uh, to to you know, kind of realize that uh, duality mm. where Geraldo was not really thought of as that guy. Like you did think of him as kind of a yeah. miserable comic, but you didn't think of him as a drug addict. And I heard Burr talk about this, and Burr was saying like, it's because he was so smart, yeah, and seemed to have it all together. And you know, he, maybe even when he was fucked up, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But like in moments where you questioned him, he could have a stingingly quick line <laughs> and then he'd be like oh there's nothing wrong with this guy you know what i mean like whereas yeah. I, i've seen Artie lang at all or, his faculties and, and fuck fucked up you know what i mean yeah. like well, whether it's on stern show or is uh, whatever uh on kumia's show on the joe buck show that he was on um i've seen Artie at his worst whereas we never really saw geraldo like that you know what i mean like you heard yeah. him talk about it a little but uh we never it, saw him actually fucked up exactly yeah. yeah which makes it so different and it's also why it's so much tougher for people now because, you know, 
let's say Geraldo had lived but still struggled with the same demons, yeah. there would be a video of him on stage somewhere fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people would tweet that out or put it on Instagram, whatever, whereas uh, that wasn't quite as prevalent mm -hmm. uh, when, he, when he had passed. Um, but uh, a hilarious, a hilarious <laughs> fucking story. So fucking funny. And it is, it's so funny, by the way, and there's a fine line on this where you come off as either a hypocrite or hilarious guy mm -hmm. to, to have the balls to walk out and know the night you just had and say, Artie Lang, you fat fucking drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So uh, what's next, Matt, as far as clips? Uh, well, I have a couple clips, the ones with uh, Patrice, he's... Uh, Greg's talking about being on drugs, like what it's like. This was very sad. Mm. Are, these, are these the last clips or no? Uh, yeah, these are the last yeah. two clips. Oof, I shouldn't have ended on such a sad note. I apologize. <laughs> well, there is, you have that, um, the Jim Florentine roast joke. That, okay, uh, good. Yeah, so <laughs> when, yeah. Well, we don't have a clip of it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Geraldo, this is on YouTube as uh, Greg Geraldo's final intervention, I believe. Um, and I think it's from 2002. 10, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, 2009, the earliest, I think. So it was pretty close to the end for Geraldo, who passed away in September of uh, 2010, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was on ONA, yeah. and he was talking about how he was uh, miserable, and he'd been separated from his wife, and this and that. And it's fascinating to hear Patrice, while, you know, uh, Norton and ONA and these guys are kind of like busting balls through the stories, Patrice is actually fascinated with Geraldo's story and to hear him kind of talk about that. It's very sad, but I thought very yeah. interesting. So let's take a listen. What drugs do to you on st Ruin everything. I mean, it makes you much less funny, much less creative. Really? Much less everything. It's a fucking total self-destructive nightmare. But but booze at first, again, you're like, you know, I'll stop drinking. Then after enough months go by, you start drinking a little bit. And you're like, you know what? I, this did make me funnier now that I think about it. And you get a little looser. You're funnier for a while. But then, you know, shit, it all fucking... Then the line is crossed then again. You're, then you're standing on stage, staring out at the audience, just staring at you. Like, sometimes, like that's, that was the final oh, line. When, shit. It, when the crowd looks up at you and they just have this look of horror. And you try to look around and see how obvious it is to people. And you see, like, a, a girl that looks kind of fucking... Anybody that looks kind of compassionate, they look out and they're just like, oh, fuck, what's going on here? Oh, no. <laughs> and then you just get like Damn. heartbroken and self-hating. What, were you just unraveling on stage? A little bit, you know, a little bit. Meltdowns, man, it happens. Yeah. God damn. But you can't be not, like, I had a meltdown, and I, but I'm not famous. Um, And actually, to, it's funny Patrice said that because that was the point I wanted to bring up. I'm acting like he's here. That's funny you say that, Patrice. <laughs> um, but that is the point I wanted to bring up is like, it's, you know, you hear about Hedberg having those moments. Mm -hmm. All these guys, you know, I'm, Richard Pryor, like famously, yeah. you know, you hear about these moments and back in the day, they didn't stick with you the way they would now. And there's a good and bad to that because, you know, the fact that you, if Geraldo were alive today mm -hmm. and a video came out on Twitter of him all kinds of fucked up, maybe that opens his eyes and says, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And whatever, you know, public backlash or mocking he gets, whatever, maybe that straightens him out. Or that Maybe. sticks to you forever and that worsens your depression and your addiction and all that sort of thing. Maybe, but I think an aspect of that, like you were saying, I think seeing yourself on stage like from the from the third person perspective, you're right. like, whoa, what the hell did I do? It's not me. Yeah, so in yeah. a way it can help, sort of. Mm -hmm. Although everyone has those stories about Chappelle and apparently none of us think of him as an addict for some reason. Everyone that goes to a yeah. Chappelle show is like, ah, he's all fucked up. <laughs> well, he, he's a, he drinks a lot, right? You know what? Well, he, so he gets like fucked up on stage sometimes. Yeah, but may, I have no, I have no idea if he's an addict or anything like that. But Chappelle might suffer from the same thing, where we all yeah. think of him as a genius. You know what I mean? The same with Geraldo, where it's oh, like, God, what, ah, he doesn't have anything wrong with him. Let's not put that out there. Imagine if this I, has been a bad <laughs> year for that. <laughs> no, I hope Dave Chappelle will live forever. I truly, I believe that. <laughs> just fuck you. Let's <laughs> no. knock oh, on all, no. the, all the wood in the room. <laughs> um, we have one more clip from ONA, right? Yep. Yeah, this, this is them uh, continuing. Uh, well, no, there's a lot of people that help, but the thing is, the people that know, the people that have the problem, you know, know that there's nothing that anybody can really do until you're at, so something has to happen that magically you just, and, it, and that kind of did, it's kind of fucking surreal, but, uh, you know, I, I think I had one of those, like, little crazy moments. A little moment of clarity? Where, well, not even a moment of clarity. Epiphany. You know, like, I, I took a bunch of acid at one point because I thought, okay, how about this? Uh, maybe just hallucinogenics, you know, I could just do that. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Because if I don't drink, you know, then I won't get to the other shit. But if I just take a little acid, that'll help me see. And, I, and so on acid, I saw what alcohol actually did to me. And I saw this, like, my body, like a reflection of my body. And I saw all the shit going through my, my body and killing me. And then, but, you know, and, I'm, and like, it wow. became so clear that I was powerless. Like, it became so clear. And the next day, I got up and started getting fucked up again. So, you know, it, it, it just, it's, it's, not, it's not logical. It's not, 
rational. You know, yeah, something crazy. Wow. How could you? So it's it's uh, I included that because I think it's so uh, in in. Interesting in the sense that, like, everyone knows someone who has struggled with addiction or depression or whatever. Like, it's so prevalent in society that you at least peripherally know someone. And I've had a couple instances where, one, I had a buddy who uh, killed himself, who I wasn't particularly close with, particularly at the end. I kind of lost touch with him. But you still think, like, ah, what if I reached out more? Yeah. And then I had a uh, friend who was much closer at the time, like one of my best friends, got really into drugs, and it became like he wasn't listening to anyone. And, you know, you kind of also lose touch uh, with them sort of naturally when yeah. stuff like that happens. But you beat yourself up over and over again where you're like, ah, what if I what if I reached out to him more instead of just saying, like, there's nothing I can do here? Yeah. So there, it's tough because and, you should always reach out and see what you can do if it's a friend or a family member yeah. or whatever. But also, as Geraldo's saying there, there's nothing you can do for a person, whether it's depression or addiction, yeah. until they commit to until they want doing it. something about it. And, you know what I mean? Like it's t- It would have been yeah. impossible, no matter how good a friend you are or whatever, to get Geraldo out of that state. And it's interesting to hear him so lucid talking about Say that. that. You know? Yeah. And addicts are so frustrating too. Like sure, yeah. when you're when they're on stuff, they're just so stubborn. And they 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 lie. And well, even just, as, take an example it's not of their a fault. As a guy of a, of a take an example of a guy we don't know that I've never met, uh, Artie Lang. Yeah. Who you hear? I mean, there is a, a catalog of of audio of Artie saying like, "Ah, I'm finally sober. I was lying yeah. this time, and now I'm <laughs> better." You know what I mean? It's like every two years there's yeah. <laughs> there's a new clip of that. Um, so and exactly, it, it's frustrating. You and, know. And I think I've brought this up before, the the discussion that Stanhope had with uh, Norton on ONA when they were talking about Hedberg. Yeah. And they said, like, oh, if only we could have gotten Hedberg off of drugs. Like, he right. maybe we would have had a lot more Mitch Hedberg. And Stanhope's like, dude, he loved drugs. Like, he, <laughs> this is yeah. probably the way he would have wanted to go out. Like, there right. was no way you were going to get him off of heroin. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the perfect example of that is a guy like Doug Stanhope, mm-hmm. who... Has been able to live with that sort. Like he is a booze bag, uh, to uh, of the highest order. Yeah, he's made it part of his personality. But, but he's able to <laughs> he's able to make it part of his per- and live with it. Like yeah, as much as Doug Stanhope is a horrible drunk and health wise probably has a, <laughs> has a lot of problems. You don't think of him in that light because he's been able to find a way to you know make it work for whatever yeah. reason, which can be a very bad thing because you know who knows. I, I don't want to keep putting uh, possible deaths out there. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. Dude, I, I actually so when I turned thirty. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a penthouse for uh, for my birthday, like as a joke. Yeah. And uh, I I have it because there's an article in there about it's Doug's. It's an interview with Doug Stanhope. It's like it's like ten pages. Yeah. In penthouse of Doug Stanhope. Yeah. He's and another underrated. We might have to do a. I've been thinking about doing episodes of each one mm-hmm. of these guys individually. Yeah. We would have to do like a comics comic comics comic episode yeah. where we talk about Attell, Stanhope, Colin Quinn, guys like that. Um, that have never gotten the respect they deserve from, from the general public. Yeah, exactly. But are, who are like worshipped by other comedians. Completely. Yeah. And, com- and comedy fans. Yeah. Like, no one loves Dave Attell more than other a crowd comics. at Skankfest yeah. <laughs> or comics. Yeah. But, like, you know, you go out to a, a Middle yeah. America housewife, she's not going to know who the fuck yeah. Dave Attell is, you know? But even Amy Schumer, when she made, um, what the fuck was that movie? Trainwreck? Yeah, when she made Trainwreck, she was like, I won't do this unless we can she give a tell and Colin. A tell apart. Yeah. Well, and Colin. A t- Colin was the father. <laughs> Colin's, yeah. Colin's part is so fucking funny in that. <laughs> yeah. She he is wicked funny in that. <laughs> yeah. And it's sad because uh Geraldo, I believe, would have been one of the more yeah. successful to come out of that tough crowd that category. Group. And th- that, you know, fr- that friend group of mm. Uh, Norton, DePaulo, Colin Quinn, yeah. uh, Voss, Bobby, like that type of crew. I think Geraldo had the potential to be the most successful, and he was brilliant. Yeah. I guess the other aspect of that is like, you know, you it's it's hard to like you said, Mitch Hedberg loved drugs. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's hard to say. Maybe Greg Geraldo gets sober and goes down some crazy political rabbit hole and becomes a guy that can't get off of that. You know what maybe. I mean? Like, I don't think he would have. But, like, there is an angle of, like, maybe that's how everything was supposed to go, you know? Uh, yeah. Like, it's sad to think of it that way, but, like, who knows if uh, some of these guys lived. Like, uh, the example I always use is, like, it, w- if Kurt Cobain lived another 30 years, maybe he'd be on MSNBC right now railing about <laughs> Republicans. You know what I mean? Like, just be one of those guys where you're like, oh, uh, boy, like, like he, he used to be great. 
Gaffigan's a little bit like that. It was also, before we uh, close up here, it's interesting to go back and listen to that episode of We Might Be Drunk because mm-hmm. you hear a little bit of, you know, Gaffigan references he wanted to be David Tell. Yeah. You hear a little bit of that and also how it doesn't come off as naturally, even though I think that is him. Right. It doesn't necessarily come off naturally, which is why he fits the Brian Regan mold better than the David Tell mold. You know, it's cool. interesting. That's a great – go go listen to We Might Be Drunk. It's a is, good episode. Is there a uh, – just to just to jump off and just to go on a tangent, is there, is there a smarter, like more brilliant, like – device that a comic has come up with recent recently than uh his than Gaffigan's like voice in his head character you know it's if you gave me time to think about it genius. maybe but yeah that is a that is a very funny there's brilliant. Not, I was trying to think of someone who's done something like that and I couldn't like, really just brilliant like um, it's that is that alone like puts him like uh, Gaffigan's funny Gaffigan has gotten Gaffigan you know Washed Brilliant. away is like, oh, this family-friendly hack. He's not that. He's Brilliant. a funny comedian. Uh, I didn't love his new special particularly, but he's, he's funny. Uh, anyways, uh, were there any clips before we uh, close out on the great Greg Giraldo here? That's it for the clips. Okay. So, uh, sadly, um, Greg Giraldo was supposed to play uh, a New York recovery benefit, mm. and he was supposed to <laughs> introduce Courtney Love. And that was uh, like an afternoon event yeah. that he did not show up for. Um, and then he was supposed to play the Stress Factory in New Jersey. And he didn't show up for that either. And, uh, you know, obviously they put the uh, the search out for him and found him in his hotel room. He had overdosed. This part of his death I was not aware of, that he remained on life support for a few days. He was I didn't a, know that either. Coma. I didn't know that. And then his family chose to, uh, I guess it didn't, you know, obviously didn't look yeah. good. And his family chose to take him off of uh, life support. And that's when he passed away, um, September 29th, I think, 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it was very sad. There were a ton of, you know, a ton of tributes. People loved Geraldo. And like I said, I was, that was the first death in comedy yeah. that I was affected by. You know, like in, in the sense that I was a genuine fan of this guy. And he died so young. And to me, so unexpectedly, because I didn't know he was battling yeah, not a lot that of type of addiction. Did. I don't know how many people did, yeah. Um, so, well, I, I say not a lot of people did, but like if you listened, like you yeah. heard him on o a at the time or whatever, you would have known that. Yeah. Um, you had to catch that episode. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, which, by the way, that's about a 45-minute appearance of uh, Geraldo. Worth a listen to yeah. hear him and Patrice. And Patrice is, like, fascinated with some of the questions he asks. So but, you, you said his family made the decision to take him off life support? Yes. Given the state of his marriage. Ooh, interesting Let's point. look into his wife here. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we always manage to find a way <laughs> to implicate people. It was people. murder. <laughs> Mike and Craig are already working on another murder investigation yeah, we got right a big, now. We got a big case with uh, Anya Marina <laughs> of uh, Nikki Glazer's podcast. Oh. oh, well, this might, by the time this airs, who knows if this is, we've probably already uh, put her in cuffs. But uh, yeah, we think Anya Marina is the one that convinced Nikki Glazer to put that song out about Bob Saget. So we're looking into her. Um, anyways. Well, I don't know who that is. So. There were, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't. Uh, there were a lot of tributes to Geraldo, obviously, and then eventually they made that documentary on uh, Comedy Central, which I believe was a little half assed, in my opinion, uh, in the sense that it was like an hour long to cover a story that could have been much longer. Uh, and also, like, the music was very distracting. Oh my God, that was awful. But I'll so give them this loud. they did get all the right people. In that documentary, yeah. there's uh, Colin, Burr, uh, Bob Saget is in there. Uh, Sarah Silverman, Gaffigan, um, there are a ton of names, but all people that like knew Greg Giraldo that were part well. of that universe. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, uh, we'll we'll close with this on uh, the legendary Greg Giraldo. Uh, unless, well, unless you guys have anything to say uh, to add before we oh. uh, wrap he, up here, he just was like for me when I started watching Comedy Central in the early two thousands. He was just like. He was the, the guy. guy. He was the guy. Yeah, exactly, it was like yeah. him. It was Mencia, like we already talked uh, about. He was, he was so funny. And yeah. he had a way that even when I was <laughs> I was a kid, it's amazing. We talk about the brilliance of him, mm. but he also told jokes that I, as a 13-year-old, could understand. Could get. Like, yeah. They were brilliant, but yeah, I also yeah. got them. You know what I mean? It was. Yeah. It's a weird, uh, that's a very fine line that he walked that mm-hmm. he was amazing at. And he is, uh, I do think he deserves more respect when you think of him. Yeah. Like, you know, everyone talks about Patrice. Everyone brings up Hedberg. Uh, guys like that that died young, but Geraldo is certainly in that category. I think that I wish we had around today. I agree. His speed and like the way that he was able to like 
turn of vo- like a really vulgar joke. Yeah. Like, uh, like he used, he was really judicious the way that he used like uh vulgarity. Like he was like, oh, they had a big sloppy pussy contest and <laughs> yeah, Artie's yeah. neck won. Right. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's fucking, that's a great joke. Right. <laughs> like you'd bring him in with the fucking shock and then you'd. Yeah, the imagery is yeah. great, too. It's fucking but, awesome. Uh, so we'll close with this and just say that uh, two weeks after uh, Greg's passing, he was scheduled to play at um, Jim Fl- the Roast of Jim Florentine, mm. which I assume that was you know held at uh, the Village Underground or something yeah. like that. Creek and, in a cave. <laughs> yeah, and um, Rich Voss was hosting, and he opened the roast by saying, uh, I was not the first choice to host this, but Greg Giraldo said he'd rather die than be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, another and that, under, which underappreciated is, comic, which is amazing, and that's why like so many people love that group of comics. Is this is two weeks after his passing, and a lot of groups of comedians in L.A. Let's say would you know have held this uh, homage to Greg Giraldo and said, "Let's all take a moment to hold hands and remember <laughs> what a great guy is." Voss is like, "Ah, this guy killed himself to get out of fucking being there." <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, uh, truly brilliant, and uh, I miss Gr- Greg Giraldo very much. Mm-hmm. But uh, and, and a lot of people listening may not be totally. I think if you're a comedy fan, you're you're probably very well aware of Greg Giraldo. But maybe some younger people aren't. I don't know. So it's worth going down a Greg Giraldo rabbit hole. Big time. Uh, even if you just haven't heard his stuff in a while. Because his his one comedy special that came out in 2009, um, a year before he passed, thank God it came out, was um, uh, I uh, hilarious. Like one yeah. of my favorites. That AIDS joke um, fucking kills me. I love, uh, <laughs> he tells a joke about a, a panda bear, like fucking a, fucking a koala, I think it is. And he says, uh, you know, I told that joke once and a guy came up to, uh, up to me afterwards and said, uh, yeah, you know, that pa- that koala joke is funny, but what about the claws? <laughs> and I thought that's the problem you have with fucking a koala. <laughs> so, uh, so brilliant. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Greg Giraldo. And we'll talk to you guys uh, next time on Why You Laughing. Make sure you listen to a very good show. Check out Vaulted Podcasts in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and uh, patreon.com slash blind mic for uh, th- these episodes a week early, as well as a bunch of bonus content. And uh, we miss you, Greg Giraldo. We'll talk mm-hmm. to you guys next time.